Hello, my name is Dale Maley. In this video, we're going to review how to make wooden worm gears. The first thing to do when you're going to make a worm gear on the design side is figure out what kind of gear ratio you want. And the gear ratio is determined by the number of teeth on the mating spur gear. So if a spur if your mating spur gear has 20 teeth, your speed ratio or gear reduction ratio is going to be 20 to 1. Another key item, you need to decide if you want a right-handed or left-handed worm gear. They are different. And I made the mistake of assuming you could flip a worm gear in for in and change the output direction. That is incorrect. This diagram explains the difference between a right-handed worm gear and a left-handed worm gear in terms of the input and output shaft rotations. Note that just by looking at the worm gears you can tell that the angle one of them is uh, angled to the left and the other one is angled to the right. So decide which one you want to make because it affects how you mark and lay out the gear. Drawing a worm gear is rather difficult by hand. The good news is you do not have to be able to draw the worm gear in order to make one. If you're interested, you can draw it up in SketchUp, a free drafting program, and there's a YouTube video which explains how to draw that worm gear in SketchUp, and I've put the internet link address here. I'll try to remember to put it in the comments as well. Now we're going to spend a couple minutes on a careful preparation of the blank to make the worm gear. And one critical item is that the shaft hole is in the center of the gear. If you don't have that shaft hole exactly in the center, you will have excessive run out. In other words, the outside area or outside part of the teeth will move in, in and out from the center line. And in some cases, if you ex have too excessive run out, your worm gear just plain will not work with a mating spur gear. There are several different options available on how to make the blank for the worm gear. If you have a lathe, one option is to take your blank piece of wood and you could turn it uh, clear down where the center portion is for your worm gear and then on the left and the right leave a uh, shaft for, to fit into the uh, bearing support that runs the worm gear. The only problem with this is it takes a long time to turn down both ends to the final shaft size as shown in this illustration. A sec second option would be to purchase a round blank or dowel to use for your worm gear blank. Then you have to put the center shaft hole in the blank. So one method for doing that would be make a fixture for drilling uh, in the center of dowels and we'll show you an illustration of that on the next um, portion of the video. You can mark the centers in the fixture just by uh, rotating them by hand once you see the fixture. Then I would suggest you drill from one end a little bit less than halfway through with a Forstner bit. Then flip the piece over in your fixture and drill from the other end but don't drill through yet. Take the blank off the drill press in the fixture, take it over to a vise and then take another drill bit and then uh, drill all the way through connecting the holes. Here's an illustration showing the fixture, which really can be used to drill a hole to the center of any uh, dial diameter that you want. You basically just put the dial into a V-groove, clamp your dial into the V-groove, and then go ahead and uh, drill from one end. Before you do that, you can mark the center where you want to drill by just taking the dial and putting in the hole is shown on the upper left photo and there's a screw point at the bottom and when you rotate that by hand the screw point will exactly mark the center for you so you know where to start your drill bit in the right location. This fixture is very handy and I use it all the time for drilling dowels. Now if I'm making a worm gear and the blank uh, or the worm gear needs to be less than say an inch and a half in diameter I can buy a dowel up to about an inch and a half. They usually quit 
at that size. So that's a good option if you have a smaller, say, three-quarter inch or one inch diameter um, worm gear. But if you're up above an inch and a half, then you're probably going to have to do like I do, and you glue up uh, wood to get a square blank. I turn that on the lathe to get it round, but don't, uh, but leave it oversized. Then drill from both ends using the, that dial centering fixture that uh, we just looked at. Then, uh, once you've got the uh, ends connected, I just take a bolt of the shaft size, say 3 8 I buy a bolt and I chuck that in the lathe, and then I slip the uh, blank over the bolt, and then uh, use a nut at the end with some washers to tighten up the blank in the lathe, and then turn the blank down to final size. My old lathe is not good enough. Uh, if you have a really good lathe, you can put the drill bit in the tailstock and then just move the tailstock in against the rotating part and it should drill exactly in the center. That's another alternative method. Here's a photo of the last worm gear blank that I made and in my old 1939 Montgomery Ward's lathe and I'm using a 3 8 bolt that's held in the chuck on the left through the blank and then I've got a couple washers and a nut to squeeze that blank against the chuck. And then my uh, tailstock, I have a live center. So I slit, uh, put that against the end of the bolt to support it at the end. And then I turned it uh, down to the final shape I wanted for the blank for the worm gear. At this point in the process, you now have a worm gear blank that has a shaft hole in the center with very little run out to the outside diameter. So we're now ready to mark out where the worm teeth, gear teeth, need to be cut. For our example on how to mark out the teeth on a worm gear, we're going to assume we have a mating spur gear that had a, has a distance between the teeth of 9 sixteenths of an inch. And we want our worm gear teeth tooth thickness on the outside to be about an eighth of an inch in size. So every 90 degrees as you go around the worm gear uh, the teeth have to shift 9 sixteenths of an inch divided by the four quadrants that you have in a circle 360 degrees which means there's a 9 sixty-fourths of an inch shift every 90 degrees. So let's assume that we want <clears throat> a right-handed worm gear which means that our teeth are going to be sloping from the left um, to the right. So we're going <clears> to <throat> mark the worm gear blank starting on the left edge of the blank. So what we do, you can do this on a computer, on your favorite drafting program, or you can just do it by hand with a ruler. And you can see the 9 16th is the distance between the uh, teeth and you can see where we wanted the eighth inch uh, tooth thickness on the outside. So at zero degrees, our first tooth is shown there, and it's nine uh, sixty or an eighth of an inch wide. So that top piece that's labeled zero degrees, we're going to end up cutting that off and taking that to the worm gear and holding it against the left edge, and then we're going to mark uh, each place where the uh, tooth is. Then we go to 90 degrees from the start. You can see that we've shifted uh, the tooth over 964 and do you do the same thing at 180 degrees and 270 degrees. Once you've got this done just take scissors and cut uh, the four sets of bars into four pieces of paper that you will use to pencil mark the worm gear blank. So now cut your paper into the four horizontal strips and make sure you label them 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 270 degrees as shown below. Also get your pencil ready to start marking out the gear blank. So on the, uh, in this case on the left hand side of your blank uh, mark out 0, 90 degrees, uh, 180, and 270 on the left hand side then take your first strip of paper at zero degrees, <clears throat> hold it at 
hold it against the blank and then take your pencil and mark the thickness of each of the teeth as shown uh, in this illustration. Once you get the marks on there at zero degrees then get your next slip of paper which is 90 degrees uh, rotate your blank in the vise until you've got 90 degrees uh, on top lay your strip on and mark those teeth repeat that then for 180 degrees and 270 degrees now find a flexible straight edge that could be like a thin plastic ruler or could even be a piece of cardboard as shown here uh, bend that flexible piece and connect up the dots say from 0 degrees down to 90 degrees and then carefully trace the edge uh, which is the outline of the teeth as shown in the photo above. At this point congratulations are in order for you because you now have your blank all marked out and you're ready to cut in the teeth. Now in this case we started marking from the left hand side because we wanted a right-handed worm gear. Remember if you want uh, a left-handed worm gear you would start your marking from the right-hand side and work your ways to the left. One of the fun things about woodworking is when you're uh, making something there's always many different uh, processes that can be used or alternative methods of making the part and you end up with the same result. So in this case how do you remove the material leaving the teeth? Well, if you're a wood carver, you could actually hand carve the teeth. So I'm not a wood carver, so I'm going to use a Dremel power tool. And I'm going to use two attachments, um, a half inch diameter drum sander with uh, replaceable uh, little sanding belts. And then I'm also going to use a power carving tool attachment for the Dremel as well. The drum sander will get plugged up pretty quick if you're removing a lot of material, so you'll go through a lot of a lot of pieces of uh, drums, sandpaper drums, where the power carving tool, it can hog out most of the material, and at the end, you can come back with a drum sander and clean it up and make it. Uh... Here's a photo of my old Dremel, and then the uh, first tool right below it is a carving tool. Uh, the second tool below is a half inch drum sander attachment for the Dremel. And then the third item or the bottom item is just one of the sanding uh, belts or discs that slip on the drum sander. Coming up next is a video of me cutting uh, worm gear teeth using that power carving tool and I'll also show you the drum sander as well. So how do you know when you've got your teeth cut deep enough on the worm gear? I would suggest you go look at your mating spur gear and uh, measure how deep the worm gear teeth can sink into it and then try to make your worm gear so uh, the depth of those teeth will go clear into your mating spur gear. Then I just made a simple gauge with a piece of scrap pine and I put a finish nail in it to the depth that I wanted to achieve on the worm gear. Then as I used the power carving tool I would use this little gauge to check and see if I was deep enough. Uh, it's very simple but it works very well. Here are two worm gears that I recently made using the process I uh, have identified in this video. Next are two short videos that show some worm gears I made in action.
So let's summarize what we've learned in this video. Here are the basic steps for making a wooden worm gear. Number one, determine the distance between the teeth, which must be equal to the distance on the mating spur gear teeth. Number two, carefully make a blank so the shaft hole is exactly in the center of the blank. Number three, decide if you want a right-handed or left-handed worm gear and make the teeth angles in the right direction. Number four, lay out a paper pattern to mark the worm gear blank every 90 degrees. Then connect up those marks, which are the teeth. And last, cut the teeth using a Dremel and various attachments.